Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Felice. And I'm Retta. And you're tuned in to Tuned In. Love Talks. You see what we did there. To... Anyways, today we're going to be talking about signs that you know your spouse is the one. And just FYI, my wife and I come up with the ideas, but we really don't talk about it. It's stuff that we've talked about before, but pre-recording these shows, we don't talk about it. So a lot of stuff we're hearing for the first time, well, a lot of stuff that y'all hearing for the first time, we're, we're, we're saying it for the first time to each other yeah. while recording. Okay, so, you know, sometimes we get the, this question, how do I know that they're the one? How can I, I know that I should move forward with this relationship? What are they willing to sacrifice for you? Because if you're in a relationship with someone and and it feels like they're putting themselves first, they're showing that they're selfish, then maybe they're not, not the right one for you. And there are situations where some people, they're more selfish and they always, they always tend to put themselves first. I wouldn't want to be in a relationship with someone like that because I would want to, I would want them to do what I would do for them. That's a good point. Yeah, uh, I mean, the Bible teaches that a man is supposed to love his wife like Jesus loved the church. What? <sighs> Gotta pause and let them think about that one. Cause, uh, <laughs> Jesus loved the church? That's no. kind of pressure. Like, everybody knows Michael Jordan, right? I, I assume. We wear Jordans all the time. Imagine being Michael Jordan's son that plays basketball. You know what kind of pressure that is? Do y'all even know his son's names? Probably, I mean, no, no, because they didn't really do anything in basketball, right? Yeah, I mean, no offense. I think I, one of his names is Jeffrey. The other one, doesn't matter. He don't play basketball as good as his dad. His dad is so overpowering in, in his accomplishments that it's hard to fill those shoes. So now we're supposed to love our wives like Jesus loved the church. And one of the main ways that Jesus loved the church is by sacrificing himself. Yeah. Right, so... As hard as it is for humans as a whole, whether you're in a relationship or not, to be selfless, imagine that being commanded in a relationship by both both the husband and the wife to be selfless. So I can't think of an exact situation, but mm -hmm. one thing I definitely think of is a lot of people make marriages these days like a transaction, like a contract. No, mm -hmm. marriage is not a contract, right? Not the Christian marriage anyway. It's not supposed to be. But... Marriage is more like, like, like being parents. Like, you know, my wife don't want to wake up in the middle of the night to change diapers and to feed my son, and I don't want to do that. And there's sometimes we may want to go out for, you know, have a date night, but we can't bring our toddler. And there's certain financial decisions you have to consider. And if you're moving to a place, you got to consider things. These are all selfless acts in order to be a good parent. The same idea goes to marriage. You don't think so? Yeah. I mean, you have to be willing, the same, like you just said, the same thing that you would do for a child. You should be willing to do that for your partner or your, or your spouse. Um, other things that would probably stick out to me is, for example, if if they feel like there are, there are certain expectations of them, but then they don't, they don't give, they don't meet your expectations is what I should say. Or the same energy that they expect from you, they're not giving it back to you. So that you wouldn't want to be in a relationship like that because you'll end up you'll end up in an unhappy situation where you're always giving or doing for this person and you're not able to receive that from them. That's true. That's yeah. Because it's like their input is not matching your output. Right. So you know uh, now it sounds like, but that that sounds like it's contradicting selflessness. No, we're called to be wise. Too, right mm -hmm. why would I go to a job and work 80 hours a week they don't pay me on time they don't give me good benefits I don't get promotions as a human being I'm gonna be less encouraged to give my best right so that same mentality does play a part you're not doing it so you can get something but if you're both being selfish and thinking about what you're getting instead of what you're giving then that's the recipe for disaster too and there are situations where you might get in a relationship with someone who doesn't know how to cook or they may not. <laughs> Thank God my wife knows how to cook. Because if she didn't, we wouldn't have gotten married. 
I would have been single and dancing at cookouts like this, looking for a wife. <laughs> Because you can't expect one person to do everything. Like, okay, I barely, rarely take out the trash. But if my husband is sick, of course I'm going to take out the trash. I'm not going to leave it there and wait till he gets better so he can take care of it. So those are things and things that you should watch for. If you if you re already notice that this person has this, this type of behavior, you're not going to change it. They're already who they are. And maybe there might be something that they're doing that you don't like. One thing you should pay attention to is how they respond to you expressing that dissatisfaction. Like if there's something that you don't like and you bring it to their attention and then, you know, they hold back a little bit like, oh, wait, I, I didn't know that bothered you or whatever. And ask you, what can I do to make it better? Message. That's someone who has a chance. But if they get all defensive and want to give you make up excuses and then bring up your bring up your faults or weaknesses in that moment then it doesn't make sense to continue having a relationship with that person what we're talking about more is like habits right and attitudes like everybody's imperfect right everybody's gonna have elements of flaws right but not everybody's a psychological or psychopathical liar is that the right word i can't even think of it right. pathological liar thanks baby <laughs> not everyone's a, a pathological liar, but everybody lies to the same extent. Yeah. Not everybody is like a psychopath that's enraged and angry enough to, you know, and road rage, like pull out a gun and shoot someone. But everyone has some element of not controlling their emotions. So we're not talking about those moments of flaws. We're talking about habits. Yeah. Habits, habits, habits. And the person has an attitude of accept it. I'm not going to change. Mm -hmm. Well, you have problems too whatever i gotta deal with. these are the attitudes and mindsets we're talking about and just to recap first one we said someone who follows jesus right we'd rather have jesus people two people submit to jesus and then then god teaches us how we're supposed to be husbands and wives the second thing was the number two was selflessness right a marriage is about two people serving each other not two people expecting to get served real good yeah for sure i'm sure that there are a lot more that we can think of on top of our heads right now but those are the things that kind of, you know, stick out to me right now. It's not about how much you know and how much is right. It's about those, if it's going to be three things right, let those things be right deeply. If if you're not a Christian and you're watching this, this video and you're like, okay, well, I'm not a Christian, so does it matter if they're Christ-like? Okay, yeah, it, it doesn't matter if they're not Christ-like if you're not a Christian and, you know, that's not your belief. But my my um point is you want to make sure that whoever you're in a relationship is like-minded that's what the bible's but that's what the bible talks about when it it speaks about um being unequally yoked because you guys could have different views and it could you guys can clash and i mean there are some su successful relationships or marriages where um one person is a christian and another person is a i don't know i i wouldn't say as far as an atheist but yeah, I'm sure there, there are relationships like that. And maybe even with those types of relationships, it's, it's successful because it goes back to them being like-minded because they're not going to force this person into to like believing what they believe. Or whatever. They both have the same attitude, so it still makes them like-minded. And maybe something about this person's behavior or relationship that they have with, with God will then have them drawn to you know your religion or whatever but the point is you want to make sure that this person is like like-minded as well absolutely like-mindedness is definitely important and of course when i say like it's not it don't have to be with everything right right but some of the important things yeah because if you have one person who's faithful and doesn't believe in doing anything with the opposite sex you know talking inappropriately 
letting a person flirt with them, kissing, sex, anything. Then you have another person who feels like, you know, open relationship. <laughs> How are you going to... Right. You're not like-minded. How are you going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's just one example of the million of examples that we can get. So when it comes to the real important things in a relationship, like trust, faithfulness, you know, selflessness, support, loyalty, you know, finances, romance, all that stuff that really make the backbone of a relationship, you really got to take the time to date someone and learn if y'all really on the same page. Yeah, exactly. That like-mindedness, it ties into everything. Like, it ties into faith. It ties into finances. How you raise your kids. That's that's one of them that I was going to say. It ties into how we treat our family. How we treat our friends. Those are all the things that you want to, you know, pay attention to. We can't change each other to be <laughs> this perfect mold of, of whatever we're, we're trying to we can't change someone into being a perfect mold, but we can actually influence each other in positive ways. And what really matters is how we receive that information. So at the end of the day, y'all, here's what we want y'all to walk away with. You'll know for sure if the person's for you, right? So if this person is helping you get closer to God, like my wife led me to Christ. My wife put me around church. Her dad's a pastor. I had so many questions about the Bible and Jesus and God and all that stuff. And her dad answered it and that led me to Christ. So that's definitely not something that Satan would do, right? Mm -hmm. Draw you closer. The second one is selflessness. Why is that so important? Babe? Selflessness is important because it, it allows this person that you're dating or with or married to, to feel valued in a relationship. And it, it helps them understand how much they mean to you. Because if, if they're always putting themselves first, they're, they're going to believe that they're not much of value to you. So in order to make this person feel like they're special and they're important, and they're the apple of your eye. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah! You would have to practice selflessness. For some, it's really hard for, for some we have that naturally. I say we because I'm one of those people. <laughs> but um, some people have it naturally. Some people have to learn it. But as long as you see that effort and you see that they're trying, then you know that this person is of good value to, to you in your life. Yep, that's good, babe. And, and the last thing that we'll say is that nobody's perfect and you don't have to be perfect. Message. It's not about being perfect. It's not about our perfection that keeps us together. It's about our progression. All right, y'all, that's it for now. Hopefully it helped y'all really understand how you recognize someone that is the one, the one that you're supposed to spend the rest of your life with. Yes, and don't forget to tune in to our love talks. talks. Till next time, Peace see out. ya. Ooh. <laughs>